Yeah, I just, I just need a couple minutes. I'll just, I'm just gonna finish shooting this, the YouTube thing. Oh, don't worry, it's all, it's all on camera, it's great. Don't worry about it. See you later. Sponsored by uh, Diet Dr. Pepper, official drink of the college football playoff. We're not actually sponsored, but if, if Dr. Pepper wants to get on that and go ahead and sponsor us, that'd be great. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Los Angeles Bias. As usual, I'm your host, Russell, here at my lovely apartment at the University of Southern California, uh, at my brand new set as well. And when I say brand new set, all I mean is that I put up a brand new poster. Uh, even though it's not a brand new poster, we've had them all season long, I just decided, oh wait, I have an extra one, I might as well go ahead and put it on the set, right above the victory poster, which... A new tradition, I am officially starting this episode. Every time we win a game, which USC has three more opportunities to do, we're gonna go ahead and uh, slap the poster for the men of Troy. Uh, it was a great weekend this weekend. It was homecoming weekend, especially uh, a lot of fun with the uh, destruction of the organ ducks that the men of Troy did compose. Uh, yeah, I had a great weekend. I've got a lot of great footage for you guys, some great Rojo films, some great Sam Darnold uh, film. But thank you guys so much for checking out this episode and welcome to LA Bias. Alright ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump on into it. So this past weekend was homecoming weekend here at the University of Southern California. Uh, topped off with just an orchestrated destruction of the Oregon Ducks with a 45 to 20 victory for the men of Troy this past weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, we were pretty close to having a complete game, uh, offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, so defensively, we held the Oregon Ducks in check. It really was 45 to 13 with Oregon scoring a garbage time touchdown against, you know, second string or whatever. But you know, Oregon is an offense like like they have been just these past couple years. They're an offense that's just that's just designed to just score, 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 score. No, you know, no huddle, up tempo, just get down the field, score as many points as possible and just hope your defense can keep the other team you know, under 40, which they weren't able to do this past weekend. But yeah, we held them in check. We held their uh, their freshman phenom quarterback in check. We held their running game in check. Royce Freeman is a very, very good running back. And we were able to hold him, I believe, yeah, I, I'm gonna, yeah, definitely say under 100 yards. We did a great job on defense. Line did a great job. Our secondary had a couple breaks here and there, uh, here and there. Uh, luckily, it did not cost us, even though it definitely could have. But uh, for the most part, I our secondary definitely kept him in check. Adori had a couple great plays. Even when Adori gets beat, he is not beat by any means necessary. Uh, one of their receivers, I don't remember which one it was. I don't think it was the Olympian. But uh, he just he was able to burn Adori just a little bit. But because of Adori's just pure speed, at the last moment, he's able to run in there, jump in there, swipe that ball away, which would have been, if he would have me uh, messed that up, that would have been a touchdown. Easy touchdown for Oregon. Another play, uh, their quarterback kind of throws like a fade route in the back of the end zone. Adore is able to get him out of bounds. The, the receiver had the ball, but he pushed him out of bounds before he was able to land, which is just, you know, that's just the trademark of a great corner. So Adore is playing lights out. Uh, our second man, Marshall, even though he was beat once or twice, you know, as is per usual. I mean, that's kind of the downside of being such a tall corner, usually not as fast as the others, but he had a great game besides those couple of plays. But yeah, our defense played quite well. But I mean, as is usual, the story is about our offense. I'm sorry, defense, but our offense is now... Yeah, defense, you guys had your first couple of weeks where you guys played lights out, well, all things considered. But these past couple of weeks have just been all offense. Oh my god, Ronald Jones the second. Rojo, the Texas Tesla, whatever you want to call him, he is just on fire. I think Justin Davis should almost be scared that his starting position may be in jeopardy. I still think as soon as he gets healthy, they're going to put him back as a starter. But I mean, over these past couple weeks, Rojo has almost 400 yards on the ground. Uh, or does he have 400 yards on the ground? This uh, 
two weeks ago he had 233 uh, which is his all-time record and I think this past week he had 170 so yeah I believe he has over 400 yards on the ground these past couple weeks once again just a monster game for him I have a couple great touchdowns by him I think his first touchdown was a 60 yarder then I think he had a 50 yarder later in the game just a phenomenal game I mean he's a strong man he's playing like a strong fast running back he uh, he's able to spin out of some of these tackles breakthroughs uh, he's never he's never down on first contact which is just trademark for a great running back so it's so fantastic to see him and he's really stepping it up even though these are not you know, Cal and Oregon they're not known for having the great uh great defenses as let's say like in Alabama obviously or what Washington will have this upcoming week but he's really it's one thing to go against a team with a bad defense and it's another to just completely embarrass them and he is completely embarrassing them so yes he had uh four touchdowns which ties a USC running back record uh, with a couple other running backs. I think the last one who did it was uh, not Reggie Bush, but Lendale White, you know, the part of that Thunder Lightning tandem with Reggie Bush. But yeah, an amazing, amazing game for Rojo. A couple other running backs got in there. I know Dominique Davis got in there. Uh, Cedric Ware was not dressed up, so I don't think we should be too uh, worried about that. I think Coach Helton said he'll be fine, but yeah, you know, it's always a little troublesome to see two of your best running backs being Justin Davis and a Cedric Ware not even being dressed for the game. Uh, but then for the rest of the offense, you know, Sam Darnold had an amazing game yet again. I think uh, 300 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception, which, I mean, at this point, it just kind of hurts his QBR a little, I guess, which really, it's a tad bit tilted, so we're going to go ahead and fix that. No need to stop filming, though. That's okay. That's okay. Just focus on me. Okay. Back to normal. But, uh, yeah, so Sam Darnold, you know, he's still playing well. He still definitely looks like the freshman quarterback, which he is. You know, there's always going to be mistakes. Uh, it just leaves room for him to improve. And, I mean, he's having these fantastic games. I mean... I love, you know, this week, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the video probably right around now, he had another Sam Darnold signature play. You know, it looks like oh, just a busted play. He's running around. He's just trying to figure out what to do with the ball, and he just throws it up and to a tight end nonetheless. Uh, I'm going to try and say this name. Immorta Bebe, I believe is his name. Uh, and he just has a juggling catch. He's able to just possess it down to the ground and get a couple yards after that. But yeah, just an amazing play. And I believe that's set up uh, within two plays. An, um, a touchdown to another uh, to another tight end McNamara, which is just great to see. You know, getting everybody involved. Juju didn't really have a monster of a game, but when Sam Darnold's spreading it out to the rest of the team, you know, you don't need one receiver to just have an amazing game. You can have just spread it out to everyone and just go crazy, right? So um, these next couple weeks will be very interesting for the USC Trojans. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to uh, explain to you guys how the USC Trojans can make it in, uh, to be the champion of the Pac-12 self. So I have a little. Uh, graphic here. So there's a simple way and then there's a difficult way. Simple way is that we beat Washington, er, calling that simple is interesting, beat UCLA, obviously beat Notre Dame, We're gonna that's going to happen. And then we need Utah and Colorado to both lose one more game so that I believe after that we end up getting the tiebreaker over Colorado if there's a tiebreaker and then, then schedule-wise because we beat Washington we'll have the better uh, Pac-12 records which makes us the Pac-12 champions. Now the difficult way is so what happened? We'd have to win the rest of our games in the Pac-12, uh, which or we have to win. We have to beat UCLA, beat Notre Dame. I know they're not in the Pac-12, but we just have to beat them in general. And then if we lose to Washington, which I'm not going to say is going to happen, but looks more uh, more likely. They just have a complete team. They look fantastic. Jake Browning looks amazing. But this is not a Washington show. But uh, so if we do lose to Washington. Then we need Utah and Colorado to both lose two more games, which is is a little shaky. So hopefully we can pull this out. I mean, if we're able to beat Washington, I think there's no doubt in my mind that there we will become the Pac-12 South champions, which would be fantastic considering where we started at the beginning of the season. But on that note, I would like to point out this is the third possible week in a row where UCLA won. Or no, sorry, I'm going to rewind that, pretend I've pretend I said USC won, UCLA lost, and Notre Dame had just a purely embarrassing loss to Navy by I think one point. But with that, I believe it as is tradition that I don the cheesy perfect weekend USC glasses. And as I did start uh, last time USC had a perfect weekend, the free foam finger, because like I said, free stuff is always the best stuff. But yeah, so we need to celebrate a USC perfect weekend. So that's it's always great to have that. Always great to see the rivals lose and of course to see your team win. 
Uh, but yeah, so uh, I do have Sasha's segment. He did send it to me on uh, UCLA is just interesting. I, that's the only word I can say about it. Interesting loss to Colorado. That was just that was a Pac-12 after dark game. That's for sure. That was just a that was just a bit of an odd weekend. But yeah, so I have Sasha's uh, segment. And Sasha, go ahead, take it away. So UCLA lost to Colorado this last Thursday in Boulder, and uh, kind of went the way I expected. Uh, offense couldn't get going. The run game looked better than the weeks past, but it still wasn't the way it should be and the way it could be, but that's how it is now. We have to kind of accept it at this point, and um, the defense looked really good again, um, but they got no help from the offense, like whatsoever. Uh, Tack McKinley got the sack or two, uh, got some tackles for loss. Um, we really held uh, Colorado, which actually has been putting up a lot of points this season, to 20 points, and I think a touchdown there wasn't even on the defense. It was, oh yeah, it was a punt return. So it's, defense held held their own, and the offense just couldn't get anything done. Mike Faithful had an off game again. The play calling was a bit off, but that's how it is now. Uh, we have to accept it. Uh, next week, we play Oregon State. I've said before that we're probably going to win that game uh, just because Oregon State is about as low as it, as it gets in the Pac-12 right now. Everybody else has kind of climbed out of the cellar um, except for Oregon State. So I expect a win there. I won't guarantee a win because we've been absolute shit this year, but I expect a win against Oregon State and a loss against USC. For obvious reasons, they are more talented at the moment than us and actually better coached at the moment than we are. And they just out-scheme us in general because the way our offense runs, it relies on the run game and we can't run and UCLA is very good against the run and they actually have corners and safeties that can press against our wide receivers who can't catch and can't get open. So going to be a rough day on offense and our defense isn't going to be able to hold it for long um, like they have against Colorado and against other teams. So that's a loss and against Cal, I don't know. Berkeley is, we've always struggled in Berkeley. I think we got our first win in a while, a couple or two years ago in Berkeley and that was kind of a big thing because I think it was a 10 year drought for wins in Berkeley for UCLA. So it, that game is going to be weird because if Cal's rush defense is, I think, bottom five in the country, if not the worst in the country. So if we can't run against Cal, we literally can't run against every, anybody in the FBS. So that's going to be kind of a funny thing to see if we actually turn around for Cal or if we keep staying crap uh, with the run game. Uh, I expect a loss there just because there is a voodoo for UCLA playing in Berkeley. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, we might turn it around. We might win the game, but I don't expect to. And at this point, that is, that puts us at what three and seven, four and seven, five, four and nine. If we lose uh, against Cal and USC, no bowl game. Rough season. That's that's a rough season, and there have to be changes made for next year. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the changes will be. But. That's it for this year. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching, guys. All right, Sasha, thank you very much for that segment. I really am starting to feel sorry for you, or you know, for Sasha, you guys. You know, it's been a rough it's been a rough couple of weeks for UCLA, and in all honesty, it's not going to get any better, especially when a uh, USC Trojans come into town to Pasadena in a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, I will not be able to go to that game. But I mean, I mean, it's just that time of year as a USC student. A lot of papers are due. Just a lot of this, a lot of that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. I really appreciate all the support you guys give us. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye.